Hi, my name is Mark Swing. I'm a hepatologist at the University of Calgary in Calgary, Canada. I'd like to talk to you today about PBC and symptoms. First of all, I think it's important to differentiate what I call subjective and objective wellness. For objective wellness, it's when a physician would, might say to a, a, a patient that your laboratory tests are normal, so you must be well. Whereas subjective wellness, I view as when a patient says, I feel well. Now we know from data over many years now that UDCA, UDCA objectively decreases liver tests in PBC patients and improves adverse liver related outcomes. Now, PBC also has a spectrum of symptoms and these symptoms have an important impact on, on an individual's subjective wellness. And three of them, fatigue, itch, and cognitive impairment or brain fog, I'm gonna specifically discuss. It's also important to recognize that our, that our understanding in this area has come a long way by the use of questionnaires such as the PBC40, which al allows us to measure subjective wellness in PBC patients. And you know, the PBC40 is with these six domains. It's also important to recognize that UDCA response based on liver test improvement in PBC patients does not correlate with an improvement in symptoms. And this has been shown in many studies, although I'm just showing one here. And so there's central importance of addressing symptoms and treating PBC patients. So in the end, they say, I am well. First of all, I'm gonna look at uh, or talk about fatigue in patients with PBC. It's important to recognize there are two types of fatigue. Central fatigue, which is fatigue that's generated from changes within the brain, so brain function or structure, and peripheral fatigue, which comes from neuromas neuromuscular uh, issues, so with uh, um, uh, the tiredness that we get with exercising, which is uh, not as important in PVC as is central fatigue. Now, what about PVC and fatigue? First of all, it's the most common symptom and it can be severe. Higher fatigue scores are occur in women, women than in men. It's not correlated with disease severity. There are higher fatigue scores with longer disease duration. There's higher fatigue scores when they, for people at, at an age less than 30 years. And fatigue is not typically significantly improved by transplantation. Interestingly, and we don't really understand this, but also fatigue appears to decrease survival in PBC patients. And you can see in this study, published about 11 years ago, that patients with high fatigue have uh, uh, lower survival rates than those with low fatigue. And the general approaches to managing fatigue in PBC patients involve this, this sort of uh, approach, which is highlighted by uh, Julia Newton and uh, David uh, Jones. And that is you want a structured approach you want to quantify the fatigue, and this could be the PBC40 or, or a Likert scale or a visual analog scale or something. Uh, you want to treat underlying identifiable causes like anemia or thyroid dysfunction. You want to try to ameliorate the effects of the fatigue, and you want to help individuals cope with the effects of fatigue on their life. And then, uh, finally, and, and, and very importantly, it's important to empathize and understand what that the fatigue is having such a profound impact on many patients with PPC. It's also very important uh, uh, for individuals to keep active as a way of combating fatigue. And this uh, study out of the UK by Alice Freer uh, 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 it would go along with that concept on which I believe, uh, believe quite strongly in. Otherwise, specific therapies currently for fatigue are lacking. What about itch in patients with PVC? Well, it's important to recognize that itch can be caused and also modulated at different levels. It can be this, it can happen at the skin, it can happen at the level of the spinal cord where the nerves that go there, and also at the level of the brain. And these are all potential targets for therapies as well. When you look at uh, the prevalence and severity of itch in PPC, uh, roughly 10% of uh, patients experience uh, uh, itch all the time. And just under 10% of, of uh, individuals, and this is a large uh, UK patient population, uh, would describe their itch as being severe. What's a reasonable approach for treating pruritus or itch in PBC? 
Well, first of all, it's important to define the severity, as I mentioned before, to quantify it. And then you want to do non-specific treatments to make sure that you maintain good hydration, drink lots of water, uh, topical skin emollients to keep the skin from getting dried out, antihistamines at night for sedation. And uh, the first line therapy uh, directed at treating it is cholestyramine, four to 16 grams per day. And typically the most important dose is the one about half an hour before breakfast. If there's an adequate response, you can try second line therapies like rifampin, naltrexone, and sertraline. And if, if, there's, if the paritis remains intractable, then other things you might consider trying or your physician might are bezafibrate, gabapentin. I've used methotrexate in some patients to affect plasma freezes and UVB light, and then more experimental uh, therapies that are coming down the pipeline. What about brain fog in patients with PVC? And I use the term brain fog to really describe what, what is cognitive impairment or impaired cognition. Now, although it's controversial, this stu study uh, showed a number of years ago that there was significant cognitive impairment in individuals with have, that have PVC compared to healthy controls. Uh, we also uh, confirmed in, in a series of patients here at the University of Calgary that there was a decrease in some of the measures of cognition in patients with PBC, but we didn't find it in other areas. What about PBC changes in brain function and the development of symptoms? This is an area of significant research interest here at the University of Calgary. So the liver disease in some way must communicate with the brain to bring about a change in brain function, which is really altered neurotransmission, which then leads to behavioral manifestation, which are the symptoms that people experience. So what is the signaling pathway or communication pathways between the liver and the brain that bring about changes in brain function? Well, these are unclear, but uh, uh, they, uh, they're an active area of research, certainly in, in my laboratory. Uh, and, uh, and these may include uh, nerve, uh, um, signals that travel up through nerves, sig uh, signals that are carried in the blood that go to the brain and, and then activate pathways in the brain, or activation of immune cells, either in the liver or in the blood, that then actually track up into the brain, go into the brain and bring about symptoms such as fatigue. And all of these pathways are potential uh, targets for therapies. Also in Calgary, we're very interested in looking inside the brain to find objective changes in brain structure and or function in people with PPC. And to do this, we use functional MRI. And what we're looking at for here is changes in brain function. And so the first question we asked was, does PBC alter brain neural connectivity? And when I say neural connectivity, what I mean are, is the nerve pathway way, nerve pathways through which different areas of the brain talk to each other. And what we found was that brain regional neural connectivity, so these pathways are altered in fatigue versus non-fatigue PBC patients. And this is just represented in this diagram, the, the specifics don't matter. Moreover, we found that brain regional neural activity or the neural pathways are also altered in relation to itch severity in PBC patients as represented uh, by the, the, this uh, MRI uh, diagram. So does also, we then ask the question, does having PBC change brain structures that are important for regulating behavior? Now, in the brain, there's an area called the hippocampus, which plays a key role in regulating moods, specifically, most specifically depression, cognition, so brain fog, memory, and movement. And we know that in people that have significant depression, the hippocampus gets around 5% smaller in size than in healthy controls. And what we found that in, in PBC, there was also about a 5% reduction in hippocampal size compared to healthy controls. So the hippocampal volume reduction in PBC patients was similar to patients with major depressive disorder. And that a major depressive order is, disorder is associated with brain fog as well. And interestingly, in major depressive disorder, uh, there has been a use of exercise and antidepressants as a way of increasing the hippocampal size and improving the symptoms of depression. The thalamus is another part of the brain, and all sensations that, that 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 all sensations that come from the body, except for smell, are relayed uh, through the thalamus to other brain regions for processing and subsequent responses. So the thalamus is a major relay station in the brain. 
And what we found that in PBC patients, there was a significant reduction in the size of the thalamus. And what this means, it's unclear, but definitely there's a change in PBC patients. So in summary, symptoms are common among PBC patients and can significantly impact their individual perception of wellness. PBC is associated with objective changes in brain function and structure that are linked to symptom development. And it's important to recognize and treat PBC associated symptoms. And the goal is to achieve both subjective and objective wellness in PBC patients so they can say, I am well. And finally, I just want to finish off with, uh, to mention where I see the future of treating PBC-related symptoms is going. I think the, 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 the treatments are going to be targeting with either medications or behavioral therapies, PBC-related changes in brain structure and or function, or the signaling pathways within the body between the liver and the brain that drive the generation of the symptoms. And so by blocking or changing these back towards our, our normal uh, state, we'll be able to improve symptoms in patients with PPC. Thank you very much for your attention.